The embarrassing Sony Spider-Man cinematic universe that doesn't have Spider-Man in it says goodbye to its most popular character. It's its only popular character, Venom. With Venom, The Last Dance. The supposed closing chapter for the Venom trilogy. Some of you might be going into this movie super pumped up, while others are just hoping they do something competent this time around. In either case, I'm gonna give you my thoughts in a spoiler-free review right now. Before I begin, if you wouldn't mind being like Venom and taking a big hefty bite out of the subscribe button, I would appreciate it as I post movie reviews, commentary, live streams, etc. every single week on the channel. Alright, let's talk about this crap factory. I'm gonna get right to the point for fans of Venom. You're gonna like this movie if you like the previous two films. I don't know how you like them. It seems almost inconceivable that you could. But there's a lot of things in this world that puzzle me, so if you like the previous two, I can't imagine anything but greatness coming out of this one for you. It's got more of the same things you've grown to love over the years. Mediocre action. Really awkward humor. A story that makes less sense than the recent Fast and the Furious films. And villains so bad, you almost wonder if they're in a competition with themselves to see how terrible they can write these guys. And in that regard, number three definitely wins. Because the threat this time is a super old ass evil alien guy who's been imprisoned by the symbiotes. And we're gonna get all of this information in a good old fashioned exposition dump right when the movie fires. Not only is this dude, whose name I've forgotten because he's mentioned like once or twice and never again, older than the universe itself, however that's possible, but he's also the creator of these symbiote hunters, these trackers that are gonna go after the symbiotes that are all over the place and paper shred them to death. They have these cool mouths that open up with a bunch of teeth and it seriously is like and then a bunch of blood shoots out the back. It looks really cool actually, I'll give them props for that. That character design's pretty sweet. You know what's not sweet? Anything else. This is a buddy road trip film with Eddie Brock and Venom. Our favorite characters are back, bouncing dialogue off of each other, getting into all sorts of mischief and not really having a central focus to the story. In fact, this movie is so all over the place, you would think the writer had mastered the art of the weave himself. At one point, we're stopping dog traffickers. At another point, we're getting down to Abba's dancing queen. I don't know about you, but that's what I want from my Venom films. The big bad symbiote cutting a rug. Keep in mind, for most of the film, they're aware they're being hunted, but they're still gonna go off on these little side quests, these misadventures, seemingly not caring that these giant creatures are hunting them down. If you're looking for a lot of Venom kicking ass, well, not, not, not really. He does most of the running in this film. Uh, there's gonna be other characters that come and go that are gonna help out while he kind of cowers away for most of the film. But don't worry, we're gonna focus a good chunk of time on other plot lines that you don't care about. My favorite is gonna be Dr. Payne's, played by Juno Temple. Dr. Payne has experienced pain, the loss of a loved one. We're gonna get a flashback that looks like it was shot in about five minutes on a green screen. That loss has shaped her into the scientific mind she is today. Working in a secret laboratory hundreds of feet under the Earth's crust in Area 55. It is there they have been tinkering with symbiotes they have found all over the globe because apparently they're shedding. That Venom's like shedding some of his symbiotic fluids out. Um, <laughs> he's a squirter and a super secret agency is collecting those samples, bringing them back to lab and they're gonna be doing some experiments. While we're not trying to unravel the secrets of the ooze, we also have another family misadventure going on with the hippies. That's right, sad sack of shit down in the dumps, Eddie Brock and his plucky companion are gonna team up with a hipster family that's gonna be road tripping it to Area 51. They wanna see the site in all of its glory before it gets decommissioned in a couple days. <laughs> and man, oh man, do we get some fun interactions. And by fun, I mean terrible. But this is all set up to humanize Eddie Brock and Venom, really showcase that these two guys are I, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. With here, Here's the deal. These Venom movies are absolute garbage. If you like them, don't let me sully your fun. Just, just acknowledge that they're pure, utter shit. Like, story-wise, bad. Action-wise, mediocre at best. Humor, 
Uh, a mixed bag, mostly terrible. Even Tom Hardy's performance after three movies, I still have no idea who this guy is supposed to be. Is he this cool, no-nonsense badass who drives a motorcycle and picks up the ladies? Or is he a schizophrenic spaz who doesn't know how to talk? It's the second one. It's the second one. In fact, the movie goes out of its way several times to John McClane him from Die Hard 3, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Fantastic film. Watch that several times over any of these movies, where he is telling the audience in Venom that he's got a massive hangover. And that's because he just got done doing some shots when the film started up, which I'm going to get into in my spoiler video right after this one. So again, think of subscribing to hear that. It's going to be a fun time, I can assure you. To put a pin on it, that's great if you like them. I like stupid crap too, but I do acknowledge that they're dumb and they just do something for me on a superficial level, whatever that might be. I want to hear from you though. Did you see Venom, The Last Dance? Again, what does that even mean? The title's so stupid. The t everything about this movie's dumb. The Last Dance. Oh, it's because it's the last time they're going to be in a movie and he dances one final dance in the film. That, okay, really? That's still what you went with? No, these movies are bad. The biggest compliment I can give this is it's better than the previous two movies. Not because it narratively makes any more sense, it might be the sloppiest, but because at least it has a decent pace to it. I was never really bored during the film. I just, I'm just sitting there like with my brain leaking out my ear thinking how much is left. I want to go now. Let me know if you saw it though, or if you're excited to see it still. Please leave a comment below, like the video, subscribe, and if you love what I'm doing, maybe think of supporting this one-man band by becoming a patron. At patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, a bunch of different tiers with exclusive videos every single month, including my favorite show that's only available on Patreon called The Cringe. I post them every month now. It's a good time. All right, hopefully I'll see you in the spoiler video next. Take care.